In this video we're going to look at the application data folder. This is a location on your PC that contains various folders and files that the software looks at when it first starts. It uses these to populate a number of the forms and menus that are available in the software. For instance it'll pick up the list of post processors that it shows you when you go to save a file for machining. First thing we need to know is how to find this folder. And that'll actually vary depending what version of Windows you're running and what version of the software you have. The easiest way to find it is to start a copy of the software as I have here, then to go up to the File drop down menu and from that choose the option to open Application Data Folder. When we do that you'll see a copy of Windows Explorer start and that'll show you the location of the Application Data Folder for your particular program on your version of Windows. Now as you can see here this contains a number of folders and also three links at the bottom. These links each go to a PDF document and they're fairly self-explanatory. There's the getting started PDF, the post processor guide which gives you information about how to edit your own post processors and also the reference manual there. So any of those can be double clicked in order to open those PDF files um, from their actual location in the install. The rest of the contents of this folder are subfolders. Each of these contain the files that the software looks at when it first starts that as I mentioned before are used to populate different forms and menus. We're going to work through these now to explain the contents of each one and then we'll come back towards the end of the video and show you how we can make an edit to some of the contents. The first folder at the top here is called Bitmap Textures and this contains subfolders and images that the software uses to present you with options to shade your material block with. If we double click on this to open it you can see there are four subfolders wood, metal, stone and misc and if we go into these you can see they contain individual images. Now if we just take a second to come into the software here and open a file from the project folder We'll click to go over to the Toolpaths tab and if we go into the Preview Toolpaths option and we come up to the top here and look, you can see that this list of materials corresponds to the files that are in there. So I have this folder or this subsection called Wood which is picked up from that folder and then all the images within that it just presents me the names of those and I can choose from any of those in this case in order to see their effect on my material block here. So there's one called dark wood and you can see in this case this has the grain running left to right. Then if we come back into our explorer window you can see the image that's being referenced from the software there and as I say this is populated when the software first starts. So you can add your own images into this library here, you can add your own folders in the group here, you can delete any of the ones that are there if you don't use them and really customise it to be the set of images that you want for your materials. You could even take a photograph of a piece of wood that you actually plan to cut if you really wanted to create a very realistic shaded image using the preview. So that's the first of the folders, let's go back up into the application data folder itself. The next folder is called Gadgets. Gadgets are small programs or scripts that can add additional functionality to your software. To download a gadget for the Vectric software you would need to go onto the website and visit this page here which is at gadgets.vectric.com. From this web page I can scroll down, I can access the gadget library and here if we scroll down you can see a selection of these gadgets. If we click on any of these it's possible for me to go into this, learn about how the gadget works and then I can click on the download button here. That will download an executable and when I run that executable that will automatically unpack the gadget and put it into my application data folder um, so that next time I run the software I'll be able to add, um, access that from the gadget drop down. Let's just minimise that and come back into the application data folder here. And if we just minimise that for a moment, we can come back into the software here and I'll show you that the gadgets drop down at the top here. If we click on it, here's the list that's being picked up from the files that are installed in that folder. So any that I've installed will be presented here as a choice that I can choose from from this drop down at the top. Let's just bring back the application data folder here. 
The next folder is called My Post P, and we'll come back to this in a moment because this, in effect, is a kind of a, a, a way of working differently with the post processors than is the default. By default, if we come down to the Post P folder and double click on it, I can see all the different post processors that we have loaded in the software that we can choose from when we go to output our file to the CNC machine. Now if we just go back into the software here and close the preview toolpath form there and click on the save toolpath icon and click on the down arrow here you can see that list and again this is just picking up those files when we start the software and populating it here. Now by default we have a very large list of machines and it may be that you only want to display a few of these or you may want to have your own custom post processor that you've edited or um, manipulated in a way to do something that's specific to your application. If you want to do that that's where the my post p folder comes in so let's just go ahead and close this for a moment and we'll come back to the application data folder here if I only want to display a few of these or I want to edit one and make a custom post the best thing I can do is copy it up into the my post p folder so let's say for instance in this case that I just want to take um, the G code arc inch and arc millimeter posts and I want to copy those and we'll go up and into my post p where currently we have nothing but the readme file I'm going to paste a copy of those into here and now next time I start the software if it finds anything in the my post p folder it will override the post p folder and just use the ones that it finds in here if it looks at this and it's empty if it doesn't have any pp files in then it will default back to using the post p folder so to look at this let's just go ahead and close the software here and actually exit rather than just close because we need to restart the software from scratch start the software again so now what it will have done is looked in our application data folder to pick up any files um, that it's found there to populate the lists if we reopen the same file just come over here and hit save now if I click on the down arrow you can see I've only got a choice of two and that's because the software has picked up that choice from that my post p folder so that's a very nice way of just isolating the post processors that you use or as I say if you're making edits to a post processor you can copy them into there and edit that version of it and that's the only one that you're going to see or the only files that you've got in there are the ones that you're going to see in this list so we'll come back to the application data folder, come up to the main folder at the again here. So we've looked at my post P and post P and how to use those. The last three folders are really just for storing default settings for different areas of the software. The tool database folder, if we click on that, keeps a copy of the file that's used to populate the tool database when you open that. When you make edits to the tool database, you add or change tools that are in there when you close the the tool database or when you hit apply and OK in the tool database then it will save those changes to this file here tools.tool underscore DB the second file in here is a copy of the default one that you get when you first install the software so if you ever want to go back to that you can just rename this and overwrite this file here now it's very important that when you move to a new version of the software, when you upgrade, that you make a safe copy of this and move that into your new edition of the software so that you can pick up the same set of tools. It's also important to realise that lots of the files within the application data folder are well worth backing up in case you have any problem with your computer. So and whenever you've made changes, you should make sure that on your regular backup, the application data folder is included within that so you've got a safe copy of it. So that's the tool database. We come up again. The next folder keeps the toolpath defaults in it. So for any toolpath types in the software, the set of values that you see populate that form when you open it are saved in these files here. So again, when you make changes to those forms and you've calculated a new toolpath, those settings will be saved so that next time you go in there, the software remembers the same settings. So typically you're not going to change these files from within the application data folder itself. Again, it may be beneficial to you to back them up, but really these are only going to be altered from within the program when you make changes to the different toolpath forms. 
Let's go back up again to the main application data folder. Finally, we have a folder called Vector Textures. If we go into here, you can see this is where I can save files that I generate using the Texture Toolpath form. If you're running a version of the software that has the Texture Toolpath in it, because it has a number of different settings that are fairly difficult to remember, if you get a group of those settings that work very well for you, then you can use the Save button in the Texture Toolpath form and save a copy of those settings into here, and then you can load those in at any time to repopulate the settings in that form. So this only applies if you're running a copy of the software that actually uses the Texture Toolpath. So that's covered all the different folders that we've got here and what they're used for. Again, to reiterate, very important that you have this set up as part of your regular backup. The last thing I want to show you before we finish the video is how we might make an edit to one of the bitmap textures. So as I said before, we could easily copy new images in there to add new choices into our folder. But in this case, what I want to do is make a change to the grain direction of one of the existing images. So I'm going to go into bitmap textures, I'm going to go into wood, and we'll actually take the file that we were using before, and I'm just going to right mouse click and copy that, and just paste a copy of that into here. Then we'll just rename that, and we'll call it dark wood, and I'm going to change this to be vertical in there. And now what I want to do is make an edit to this to rotate it around 90 degrees to make that grain go into a vertical direction. So let's just come up and double click on the one we want to edit here and open it in the standard Windows Photo Viewer. And I'm just going to hit rotate 90 degrees and then we'll exit out of there and we should see that's now updated. So I've got a vertical version of this. Now again at this stage I won't see that in my material choices in the software because I have to close the software and restart it for that list to be repopulated. So let's go File, Exit, start a new copy of the software. Now it should have repopulated the list. We'll open the file again, come over to the Toolpath tab and we'll go into the Preview and click on the drop down here and if we come up in the Wood folder there we should now see something called Dark Wood vertical. So if we click on that, now we can see the vertical version of the grain being projected onto my model. And in that, in exactly the same way, you could edit any of the other images, or if we copied images into that or renamed any of the images, that information would also be picked up the next time we start the software. So that concludes this brief talk regarding the application data folder. Hopefully you can understand now that this is an important area for the software and it certainly gives you access to some things that you can customise in order to make the software work better for yourself. Also, as I say, it's very, very important to remember to regularly back this up so that you keep a safe copy of things like your tool database, any custom materials that you've created or the list of gadgets that you're working with. Thanks for watching this video.